got it. Okay, welcome everybody. So great to see you. Um, my name is Daniel and um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my background and how I got here. Uh, and I'm gonna try to keep it brief because it's of course, as everybody has a long story <laughs> of how we all got to this place, you know, maybe not super long, but for me, it's kind of long. So it goes back to like when I was planning to be in this life and no, I'm just kidding. Actually, that's maybe true. Uh, it start, I can go back to uh, when I was five around and I was so, I remember I have an older brother and I remember being really, really excited about going to school and getting, you know, like learning. I thought, oh, now I'm going to learn stuff, you know, that was the whole mindset around it. And, uh, and my brother seemed to love, he's three years older than me, he seemed to love school and, and everything. And we were just going to go to a regular school. There wasn't anything uh, alternative or whatever. Uh, regular public school in Canada, in Montreal, Canada. And, uh, and so then uh, when I got there, right away, I was like, I love my teachers. I love the kids around. I love the, you know, playing and interacting and stuff like that. But I'm not sure these adults know really like how to like how to do this <laughs> like how do we like I'm not you know I, I want to just I want to learn some things and we're not getting there you know and so by the time I was about 12 I uh I started talking to my parents and saying maybe 9 to 12 somewhere in there and saying is there another way to do this there's got to be some other way but they didn't know anything else so and then by the time I was 15 or 16, I started just sort of like, okay, I'm just going to like this school thing, not really working for me, but I'm just going to sort of do what I have to do to graduate because my parents seem really anxious about that. And then spend as much time as I can doing, I guess I was doing unschooling. I was doing self-directed learning most of the rest of the time. And uh, so then when I became an adult and wanted to become a sort of like work with kids, I love working with kids. And my dad said, maybe you should be a teacher. And I was like, well okay, maybe I'll just go and see, maybe I can transform the schools somehow. And so I got into that for a while. And of course, the schools don't want to be transformed in the most, for the most part, uh, although there are very alternative schools and stuff like that. But still, I was working in public education for the most part, I did end up in a couple of very alternative schools. And that was kind of great, but I wanted to do more than that. And so I started working in very, very, very self-directed learning environments where you literally just follow the kids and uh, and do what you want to do as well. But it's all like a whole community and everybody's sort of, you know, it sounds weird to say, but everybody's doing with just what they want to do. But of course it's with the intention that we're going to, that we are building community and that there, no harm is done to others, you know, so as much as possible, you know, and that we had conversations around that when that did happen inevitably, you know, that there's some conflict or whatever. So anyways, so at a certain point though, I realized that, we adults need to be school. And I definitely had to go through that myself. And I encountered that a great deal with the adults, sometimes with kids, sometimes there were kids who took time, you know, especially if they'd been to regular, very, you know, restrictive kind of schools and they were the guy out of that for whatever reason and came to join us, uh, they might take more time, but the adults in particular, we had a lot more to do, especially if we had gone to through, you know, all those 12 years or whatever of, schooling 13 15 18 years of schooling or whatever it was and hadn't realized that about our true education so much anyways so at a certain point i, I started doing that and then i met sierra at a wonderful conference that she was giving online during the pandemic as she and some friends and some other wonderful people and uh i met a couple of a few families who were like okay, we, you know, this is the pandemic. What do we do? How do we do this thing? We can't really, really have communities. What's happening with your community? And I had to close my community. We had to close the community because of the pandemic. And so then we thought, okay, let's do something online. And so that's what we've been doing is working on that because, you know, it still seems to make sense, even though the pandemic is, you know, over, I guess, or whatever that means, you know, I don't want to get into that conversation, but whatever that all means uh, for everybody. Um, yeah, we still we still felt like there are people in regions where they don't have a lot of resources or people who just don't might have resources around them, but don't know how to go looking for them or don't have any connections uh, and just need for whatever period of time or long term, whatever, to 
have a community uh, online that can be supportive of them in whatever way. And so we started thinking about a, a sort of a, what we, we don't like to call it a class. We like to call it a confluence of collective inquiry. <laughs> confluence of the collective inquiry around what does it mean to do this, this thing, you know, and how do you become your own, your own guru at it or, and, and maybe support some others in doing it as well. Hmm. And Sierra has a kind of a different story, but I'm not sure. Sierra's kind of exhausted. I'm gonna do this for you, Sierra. Sierra's uh -huh. exhausted. She's one of the organizers of this thing and she's amazing. You wanna, you wanna do my introduction for me? <laughs> <laughs> I can do it, I can do it. Go, go, go. Great to, thanks, thanks, thanks for that intro, Dan. Um, and yeah, it's always great to hear your story. Um, and excited to hear everyone else's stories too. Um, I know there's like a wealth of experience and um, yeah, just perspectives in this room already feeling that. And yeah, just grateful to be able to be in a space um, to kind of, yeah, be in this in this conversation that is is such an important topic for me and kind of much of what I do in terms of like where I put my attention and energy revolves around um, yeah, exploring what it means to de-school myself ongoingly, and then also create spaces for, um, yeah, young people to not have to be schooled in the first place, but then part of that is supporting adults in their lives in, in yeah, unlearning and, and relearning different ways of being um, that feel more aligned with our hearts and um, our values. So, um, yeah, again, I'm Sierra. I am, <laughs> some people mentioned being Costa Rica. I'm partly uh, from Costa Rica, partly from Northern Canada. Um, I'm in Ecuador right now visiting um, dear friends here who are also organizers of the conference. And so I'm in a house and there's, we're on different Zoom rooms and different meetings and it's pretty fun. We're supporting each other um, through this event. Um, and my experience or background, I guess, with the, all of this stuff, it's kind of a long story, is a long story short. Um, oh, another Tika in Canadian. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Love it. Um, I, so I, I walked out from school when I was eight years old. Um, so I had a few years of public schooling. Um, and for many, many, many reasons that are similar to many other, <laughs> so the same reasons uh, that many young people feel uncomfortable in school, um, I left and I was able to, um, because of where I lived and because of the parents I happened to have and so many different reasons that was, that I now recognize as being just like super lucky. Um, and so that choice of being able to choose something different and step away from something that really was not doing, that was not resonating with who I was, um, and to be able to, to explore beyond that was, is something that I hold very, very dear and something that I would want and that I want to help create a world where every young person has, has that choice, at least to some extent. Um, within the context of their, their, their community and their families. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, it's been a long, lifelong journey, um, exploring what other ways of doing uh, this could be. Um, so when I left school, I did not have, um, yeah, much of a sense of what else could be, <laughs> just a sense that I needed to create something different for myself. Um, and that's what I'm, I continue to be doing. Um, and more and more finding that what is really, really most needed is um, is community um, to do it with. Um, so when I left school, all of my friends went to school, and so it was a it was a challenging, yeah, challenging to like be so clear about not wanting to be in that space, but also longing for longing to do it with others, right? Um, so yeah, when I met Dan, um, Dan has a, a ton of experience. Um, starting and uh, facilitating in self-directed education learning spaces. Um, I've also worked as facilitator in quite a few different communities. Um, and just, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's more questions than answers that come, that come out of those experience, but also just like a really, a really strong, I think being in community with young people who are de-schooled or unschooled or unschooling, 
um, who embody a different way of being with each other and to feel what that feels like and like the healing and the hope that is in that space is something that like you can't forget is like it like it like it, it's like it becomes part of like your at least for me it's like become part of like my north star um it's like well if 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 young people can do it that means all of us can do it because all, all of us are young you know have our young people in inside of us and so um that really has given me a lot of hope um which I try to bring also into into all of these different spaces where there's more adults than young people um which I wish there were more young people in these spaces but <laughs> that is an ongoing an ongoing um challenge that we uh, or like learning uh, path that we're on so yeah that's me um thanks for being here i'm excited to get into yeah you know, we have some questions prepared some explorations um and i think but first dan is you're going to share a little bit more about kind of some ideas we have um or possibilities in the future yes absolutely <laughs> So um, I forgot to mention my daughter. So my daughter is kind of uh, um, part of the reason why I got here also, because uh, when my youngest daughter, my older daughter was kind of like my brother. She really enjoyed the whole thing until she got into like late high school and into university. And then we started having conversations around that. But my younger daughter, uh, when she was about nine, she said, I think I'd like to do something different, kind of like what I had done when I was a kid. And I hadn't even told her that story. I hadn't even said anything about that to her at that point. And she just kind of came up to me. And, and then I was like, wow, you know, I sort of felt the same way when I was a kid. So what are you thinking around that? And then by the time she was around 11 or so, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we came to Costa Rica, actually. And she went to regular school for a bit just to make friends. And, you know, I just sort of said, and I'm a teacher. I was a school teacher. So I could, you know, I was like, here, just do this homework. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> just, you know, whatever kind of thing. And she did that and made a bunch of friends and had a good community here to get going and then did her own thing. So anyway, so here's what we're doing. So Chol, it was Chol was Cedar Hill Open Learning for, and we were doing um, learning centers. Uh, in, I did one in Montreal, one in Costa Rica for a while, uh, two or three in British Columbia. And then we ended up with one, as I said, that was, we ended up calling Cedar Hill Open Learning because it was in Cedar Hill in Surrey in near Vancouver in British Columbia. And so then that got closed during the pandemic, but we continued on with doing uh, consultant work and things like that online with people. And now we're starting uh, Chol Ecoversity. So that's what we're calling it for now is Chol Ecoversity. And that's all this stuff that we're talking about here. Um, we... We would like to have, I mean, the, the ultimate goal is to have a kind of a online uh, portal, web portal, uh, where people could come and just hang out with each other or, or get some answers, you know, question, answers questioned or questions answered and uh, get, uh, you know, some conversations some connections and maybe be able to find some resources in their own community because that's always the goal is to have some actual IRL, you know, in real life. Uh, kind of stuff going on is ultimate, of course. Um, but yeah, so, but of course, allowing for the support, even ongoing of being, you know, just being online and having a community online as well. So, so that's the ultimate goal at the moment, as I said, working on a book, which is basically what we're going to be basing this on is to start looking at some of the principles or concepts that are looked at in the book, you know, and I, tongue in cheek, I called it the the step-by-step uh, -step guide <laughs> to self-directed learning, you know, sort of like tongue in cheek, like that can that can't be done, obviously. And so, but it's sort of just okay. Here are some principles we've figured out along the way that are kind of, you know, important to look at and figure out because uh, they are important, especially if you're working with children, but even if you're working with yourself or with other adults or whatever. We, this is, you know, sort of the path of de-schooling for us as adults is to kind of, go, kind of go and back and hug that little child that we were and, you know, still are in some ways and, uh, and go from there kind of thing. So, so is that, and then, as I said, this confluence of uh, this class or confluence of collective inquiry, uh, which would be, we were thinking of six or eight, we haven't done it yet. So we're, we're just thinking the first one will be six or eight sessions 
where we talk about, you know, we start talking about these questions together and start building community around this. And then of course, on the, the other part of this, underneath all of this is that we're looking for, you know, ongoing looking for people to work with and do this with. Uh, so yeah. So do we wanna give some time, Sierra, for anybody who wants to, maybe like 10 minutes or so for people who wanna like just share their story a bit for a minute? Absolutely. So? Wanna just- Yeah, I would love that. So, oh, right. sorry, just come in. so if anybody wants to do that, let's do that. Yeah, and you could just raise your hand and Sierra will let me. Cool. Yeah, just feel free to jump in if you want to share what brought you to this space um, briefly. I mean, there's a lot of us, so maybe not enough time for everyone to share, but we'd love to get some voices into the room. Yeah, go ahead, John. So um, kind of interesting. Obviously, if you saw, like, you know, I, I teach at a university and I teach doctoral students to reimagine learning environments within a community. So, and I have K-12 people in, I have, you know, uh, university people in the whole bit. And I have 56 years in the educational environment. And the reason I'm in there is because school basically sucked for me. <laughs> yeah. it, it, and I went into it because I really want to make change. And I've gone all different levels, 39 years in K-12 and superintendent of schools, all that, now 16 years working in a university where my major mission and goal is to kind of get um, my students to begin to think about how we have to reimagine education for the future within a community. And if you notice, I don't use the word reimagine schools, just reimagine learning to allow for the potential for different models. And as you said, during the pandemic, as I tell my students, that, you know, that really gave us an opportunity because we saw all of the problems of many systems within a community, healthcare, social justice issues, family, all of those things. And that it, it actually is giving us an opportunity to rethink or look at potential from a different point of view, as opposed to problem solving to you know save the schools. What we really, I'm trying to get them to begin to, to explore. And I utilize the work of Carol Sanford quite a bit, um, the regenerative life because of what she says. And, I'm in the, and I'll stop right here. The question I ask them is, how do you create an environment that basically allows for the essence, the potential, and the capability of every single child within that environment to emerge? And how would you structure that to make it happen? So, you know, that, that's where I am right now in terms of my own thinking of what I'm doing, and particularly at my age. I really don't care what I say to the establishment because I think that that's the important thing. So okay. I'll end there. That's a great question. And hopefully you get some of that answer today. If not, I'd love to talk to you further after this, or maybe you join a class with us or something like that. Yep. And I got to drop off probably about 10, 15 minutes because I got to go to a class, my own class in London, <laughs> not travel, but through, through this. So and, I apologize for jumping off earlier. And bless you for staying in there and doing this work. This is amazing because, you know, we need it from everywhere that the change come for sure. Uh, so, Roxanne, I think I, I pinned, I sort of made uh, John central. I don't know how to undo that. I make <laughs> Roxanne <Yeah>. central. <laughs> well, there we go. Maybe we can, there we go. So I think Roxanne was next. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much. Um, kind of the little one is falling asleep. So I'm going to do this simultaneously. Um, I don't, this question is, um, so we've kind of just started our journey, right? Our kids are two and four. And um, my question is a bit maybe open. I'm, I'm just trying to phrase it right. But we moved to, to Portugal, right? And where we're also like, I think it's our own way of um, figuring out our family. Because both my husband and I, we were, yeah, we're, you know, we were schooled in, in the traditional system. And we're used to being, well, well seeking acceptance and acknowledgement from outside and there's a certain way that things are done so we're quite the um 
the pattern breakers in our own um, social circles by just not following. And both our girls didn't go to a nursery and, or, you know, we didn't send them to kindergarten, which is um, the norm in, in, in Copenhagen at least. But my challenge is right now is that I, I find it very difficult to align with people that I meet. I have, and I don't know if it is from the way that I've been schooled, but I have a very high quality bar for generally the things that I do. And I feel that I'm stumbling and fumbling a bit around right now when we're looking into, you know, how do you create this in community? How do you create great learning experiences? And I don't know if that's part of the process. I'm I'm just finding it hard to to find people that that yeah that that are having a high quality standard in, in the work that they do and um and in the work I mean like just with parents I'm meeting you know we make circles or just when we discuss this what what are we going to do and different alternative schools that I have visited I also find that there's a lot of reinventing wheels and I just wanted your thoughts on that because there are some incredible authors and concepts out there yet um they're not you know there's a lot of when I go out and, and meet I see a lot of reinvention and redoing things and not really using some of the um, brilliant minds that are already out there um, I don't know if that question makes sense or if it's my you know it's the way that I've been schooled so yeah, I need de-schooling in order to kind of embrace this or what it is but I'm really mm, not sure how to go around this because of this quality bar I mean. Yes. Okay, do, you that want makes sense. do you want to repeat the question in like one <laughs> sentence so we can be clear make sure? Shoot, I can't. Okay, I can't in one because it's two, I guess, right? Okay, but the, the, let's just then do the, the first one. It's like if it's part of the process that there is not a um, part of the process of building a community and learning together that there's not a high standard of quality. Or is that my, that, does that make sense, that question? Like rigor, you want, you're thinking like, how do we get rigor in here or? Yes, probably that's the right one. Yeah, rigor, like I'm, I'm missing that, you know, the, um, rigor is might, might be the right word, yes. We make sure our kids are gonna be like intelligent and have enough intelligence kind of thing or enough knowledge. Not or... intelligence, no, because I define, like for me, quality is it's that what you do, you do it. Like you, you, you put in everything that you, um it's not half-assed I don't know if that makes sense like that you, that's actually I, the best way to express it for I'm sure I'm just yeah. seeing a lot of half-assing on school <laughs> project like like where there's not enough of you know like fall through or you know where they use like concept as as a democratic forum but yet it's not being applied actually when there are challenging situations so it's more like marketing gimmicks of people that didn't actually you know look into it or do the work themselves so this is yeah, so, so maybe, not, yeah, right. something that's, like that. And I don't know if that's part I of the process. Help people sort of is that? train yeah. a bit more in this. And I mean, if we Great could question. stop with that, really, maybe train whatever. So that's a, that's part of our, like, our purpose, really, in doing this as part of it. So that's a great question. And what was your other question? Well, that's good. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, I forgot. No, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm breastfeeding, right? <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I forgot it. I forgot totally. the, the other one. That was probably, yeah. Okay. So, that yeah, was so, so we'll, are you, can we move on to somebody else? And then we're going to, we're going to come back to like the question, we'll we'll maybe have some breakout rooms and we can try to answer the questions in there and come back and talk about them a bit more. So uh, we'll first let everybody else get, get a chance to talk who wants to talk. Okay. All right. Cool. Is Sierra still there? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Yeah, you want to, yeah, wants to go. Yeah. Thank you. I, I just want to highlight a term uh, or a concept that Daniel mentioned that I have found as the key working with uh, healing adults of their school disease. And this is the self-directing learning concept. Because I have found that one of the worst habits of education, no matter how radical or, or alternative you want to put it, is this idea of like, you need to learn because of a purpose, a utilitarian use of the knowledge you're getting. And so when I, I help adults to remember the joy of the absolutely useless, uh, playful, 
learning because I, this is what I want to learn because I'm curious about that. And then they always remember that the things they know the best or remember, even if they learned it very long ago, are those that were seeked by the joy of uh, the pleasure of looking for what does this mean? If we could recover that in our sense of what is learning for or why I am doing this or why I'm curious of this, then the uh, then the quality comes by itself, Roxanne, you know, because you are orienting your curiosity into what is useful for you right now, right here, and that helps you grow and, and build the life you want to live in, no matter what age you are when you get that knowledge. Thank you. Thanks, Yayo. Yeah, actually, Yayo, um, for me, that's hitting the head on the nail or the nail on the head. Um, yeah, we, we, we really... I mean, even I, I mean, I think Einstein to me is like the perfect example of saying that kind of thing that he, I'm, you know, I think he says something like, I'm not a genius. I just know, how, I just still know how to play and I play with what I do and it's fun <laughs> for me, you know, kind of thing. So I think that, you know, everybody was worried about genius. Well, if you want genius, I think if you can, if you can keep your kids, if, 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 we, if we could all learn to, to keep playing throughout our lives with what we love to do. And play could look like Dungeons and Dragons or it could look like just, you know, throwing yourself on the sand <laughs> and rolling around or whatever. I mean, whatever, you know, any, any level of, of play is, is great. And I think somehow we think play is not, I think you said useless stuff like play or something like that, but actually play is essential to, to learning, to understanding. Uh, and there's so many geniuses in the world that have demonstrated that, you know, going into the jungles of Africa and playing with the gorillas and, you know, all these kinds of things. I know, I know you know who I'm talking about. So anyway, so yeah, great. And we'll talk about that some more, but that's wonderful. Anybody else? I think we have time for maybe one more person to, to share something or ask some questions before we move on to the next section. So we have Devin here. Devin. Yeah, thank you all so much. I'm really grateful to be here. Um, I, I think my question is like, is there some kind of balance that's needed between like self-directed learning and then also trying to, you know, help one another or help young people have the tools they need to like begin to address some of the crises and inequities and you know, issues of climate justice or racial justice, like is, I feel like in some cases, maybe this is like a half-assed approach that I see, but I feel like sometimes people are doing self-directed learning, but then there's no work that, that like some things are totally, go totally unaddressed that are really, really important around like understanding who we are, understanding how we're connected, understanding how we have a role to play perhaps in, in making the world better for other people. And there are so many students that I, know of that I work with that are that are not about to be you know liberated from their context of like a public school that's underfunded and because of really oppressive policies are in a very difficult situation and if we're only doing work outside of that system how can we also possibly you know work to undo or or, or redo those systems yeah we definitely don't want to knock classes I mean I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm trying not to call it a class because I want people to come and think okay we're going to be teaching you we're going to be like directly teaching you but instead it's yeah but if classes were in fact if you look at the if you look at the models of Sudbury Valley and Summerhill for example that were democratic there's other kind but there are other schools like that but they all have like they might not be so democratic in those in the way that Summerhill and Sudbury Valley are but they might, but they still all, all the ones that really, really work well um, have classes for kids, but you choose to go to the class. You, you, you decide how you're going to take what inf information or conversation you get from that class to go and do what you want to do, your project or your in introverted thing or your healing thing or whatever it is, or your commun communal thing with other people, but you decide how you're going to do that and so it's so there might be lecturing there might be um, 
all kinds of aspects that look like regular school, but there's no attendance. There's no like, you have to be here. And if you're not here, then you fail or anything like that. Or we got to test you and make sure you learn what we want you to learn or whatever kind of thing. Although if you want to test, you they, you know, there might be, you know, if you say, oh, I would like to be tested on, on, on these skills for whatever thing, you might take a test and that's fine. But it's, but it's not like, oh, you have to do it this way, you know, kind of thing. So there are models like that. And so, yeah, I mean, that would be part of um, what we want to do and get across to people is like, it's not about when you're anti something, it tends to be throwing the baby out with the bathwater, you know, kind of thing. And so it's not about being anti school or anti university. I love that what John is doing. I've been there. I've been in schools trying to do that kind of thing. I still actually am, am, might be working with an online school that is more curriculum based, but they are more open to like, you know, the kids should be able to learn the way they want. So I'm hoping to work with them and have a space where, for what you're talking about, where kids have more and more spaces like that, where kids can go to a place where they're understood as self-directed learners, but still get a degree if they need to, or a, a high school diploma if they need to, and not have to do a GDE or what do you call whatever called yeah what's it called the you know the, the American version of online testing out of high school or whatever so yeah so anyways that's my take on it but uh, we can definitely talk about that some more also thank all you. right thank you so much did you have anything or did you finish uh, what you want to say Devin yeah, yeah. no that's it thank you all right so uh, so we'll go ahead see just yeah, no, I'm just noticing John uh, has his hand up again. I'm just wondering if there's anyone else that wants to chime in um, before we pass it over to John. Oh, you're muted, John. Go ahead. I have to leave. I just, I put in the chat, um, check out in, in Boise, Idaho, there's, there's a school called One Stone. It's totally run by the kids. It's uh, a community school. Um, Three quarters of the students are uh, make up the board. The adults who are on that board are basically there to mentor the development of their leadership, but the kids design the curriculum, et cetera. And that school has been in operation for seven years. So I put the website in there. Um, it's just an interesting school because the, the, the only thing I'm always concerned about is that idea of yeah, like like you said, you know, we're not bashing. The question is, how do we evolve the learning systems that we have in our communities? And I think right. that becomes an essential question, and let different models to emerge. Yeah, and I gotta go. <laughs> okay, thanks, John. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Okay, bye bye. Bye. All right, so Sierra. Uh, did you want to say anything or I'm going to just sort of go over some of these principles just really, really quick. And then we can have, and we got these questions and we can have maybe other questions that we add into. And I don't know if we want to do a couple of breakout rooms at that point. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea. Let people talk. Yeah. One thing we kind of talked about was we have some questions, which Dan will share. And then of course, some questions have come through already um, through what everyone shared and maybe if you do have any other additional questions, maybe you don't want to speak, but if you want to share them in the chat, and then we can do just kind of a bit of a quick poll to see which ones are most alive for us um, as a collective, as a group, and then we can like break out into those into rooms to kind of go deeper into those questions. That's kind of the plan ish. Um, okay, that works. For I put the two questions I got into the chat, Sierra, in case you didn't get them, and then so they're there. And anybody else who wants to add. That's great. So those are the questions from um, Devin and from, who was it? Sorry. Roxanne. Roxanne, yeah. Roxanne. Okay. So, um, okay. So, yeah. So some of the principal, I mean, people have already mentioned some things. Uh, and actually I had questions like that. Like, what do I do? Uh, if my kids don't care about making, so we, we talk about not fearing making mistakes in this process, right? So when we're learning, you have, when you're learning something, you have to make mistakes, for example, and that's inevitable. And you can't learn actually without making mistakes. It's, it's sort of a fact of life. Uh, it's not sort of, it's absolutely a fact of life. And so then, but then we live in a society where we consider failure a bad thing. And we talk about failure. So how do we reconcile 
that with kids. But then, then you can say, well, if my kids don't care about making mistakes, will they ever be, you know, do anything good, right? So, so there is always that balance as, 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 as everybody's been talking about. Okay, so there's, you know, there's two sides to everything, of course. So let me just say these principles. So there's that one, learning about without the fear of making mistakes is one of them. Uh, following my own path uh, of learning, which is self-directed learning. So following my own path of learning and finding my own education, because that's a different thing also. So self-directed learning. So education includes learning, but learning and education are not necessarily the same thing. You know, learning, learning is learning. It happens all the time, right? And education is more, I think, the way I look at it is education is more you know, purposeful and directed a little bit, even if it is self-directed, there's, and there might be mentors involved with that. Of course, when you're a child, even when you're doing self-directed learning, you're going to need adults around you. You're not going to just be able to do that on your own, but as an adult, that's, that's what we're talking about also. So learning about the fear of mistakes, following my own path, change the way. Okay. So that for me, it was change the way we think about children and change the way we think about ourselves when we were children and what we would have needed and what we need now to de-school or heal or however you want to put it. Um, and also when we're working with children to look at them in a different way that despite the fact that they might seem helpless in some ways, especially little children, uh, they're, not, they're not intellectually helpless. So intellectually, we're never helpless, right? And emotionally also, we don't need to be helpful. I mean, if we're making our children emotionally helpless, that's along the same lines of like, in, you know, uh, repressing and, and, and enslaving and all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, and then to become, yeah, then, then we get to the point of becoming one's own guru. So that's in, that's in there also. And what does that mean? You know, so what does that mean as an adult? What I can, what don't I need somebody to tell me what to do all the time? You know, like I need guidance. Give me guidance. Right. But in, in fact, you know, that's true. We always need guidance and input from other people, but in the end, you've got to make your own decisions and find your own path and uh, your own education, all that kind of stuff. And what you want to do, find your own um, bliss as uh, one of my favorite philosophers says. Um, and star Wars is based on that. Right. So uh, the, the hero's journey or the heroine's journey or however you want to put that. Uh, being aware of the unseen. Oh, so the, here's this. Here's this, this thing. So for children, for children or even for adults, if, you know, if your parents are very important to you or if you have adults in your life that are very important to you, whether you're a child or an adult uh, or other adults or friends or whatever that are very important to you, your wife or your husband or your partner or whatever, being aware of the unseen bond and influence that can come up between that, right? And how uh, that, you know, and just be aware of that kind of thing, especially for little children, but even as adults. And, okay, and then it comes down to labeling. So the labels also, like, you know, we have autism and ADHD and all these kinds of things. And as much as that might be important to people, you know, and part of their makeup and stuff like that, uh, I'm not talking about that side of it. We're talking about why should that be a problem? Why should that be a problem? You know, the only reason why it's a problem is if we're thinking there's only one kind of way of learning or doing things, right? Uh, but, you know, it doesn't mean people shouldn't say I'm, I'm autistic or I have ADHD or whatever. That's not, the, that's not the point. The point is what it shouldn't be. Okay, cool. You know, hopefully you know how to do work with that. We're all differently thinking. I haven't figured a label for my kind of thinking. Maybe I'm on the autism spectrum. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, people said to me I had ADHD probably if they, they didn't have that label when I was a kid. But my mom's like, you probably had ADHD when you were a kid. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. Right. All right. So there's all those things. So all those things um, that I want to put out there. And we can start a little bit of conversation, maybe for like five minutes or so, in case people have more questions along those lines. Or I've sparked something with people. Uh, and then we're going to do breakout rooms. Does that sound good, Sierra? Okay. And right after breakout, do we, do we need a break right before breakout rooms uh, or right after breakout rooms? How are people feeling? We'll take a two or three minute break so people can, because we're going to go an hour and a half or whatever uh, with this. Yeah, how, are, how are your bodies? You need to. So I'm going to say, okay, who needs it before the breakout rooms? Just raise your hand like this if you need it before the breakout rooms. 
raise your hand if you, uh, I don't, a lot of people are not on video, so maybe you could put your, your How long for the breakout rooms? Or right after the breakout rooms, have a break, have a break. I think we'll do uh, like a 20 minute breakout. Before. Okay. Okay. All right, let's do that. We can do a 10 minute breakout if we want, that's fine also. We had scheduled 20, but like we're, you know, we, they, it's been going really well and we've had like a lot of great conversations. So we can maybe make it 10 or 15 minutes for the breakout rooms and then come back. But okay, so any conversation right now before we take a break then? Just raise your hand and give a further any question. Any additional questions any popping questions up? Any you'd like to talk about in the breakout rooms uh, or here? or something you'd like to say, a comment on any of these, like, I think that's bullshit. <laughs> you need to shut up. <laughs> that's fine also. You don't have to agree at all with me or anything that's been said so far. Um, I, actually, hi, I don't know. I can't remember exactly how to raise my hand on the Zoom, so I thought I would just pop in. Um, I appreciate everything I've I've heard. I hope it's okay. Um, I and, and I also have popped in because I'm 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 am going to have to get off because of a time commitment to something else. But um, one of the things I I I particularly appreciated hearing different perspectives and that there is not really one way to do this and to move forward. And in particular, I think Yayo uh, was talking about that, <clears throat> suggesting that. You know, sometimes there's value just in the play of tackling something and learning something new. And I've been working with a small cohort in southern Portugal of um, folks who were initially sort of 10 to 14 and by now are uh, sort of 12 to 16. And um, as they've aged, the older parts of the group are looking for more structured learning. Some mm -hmm. of them have gone to... Um, towards saying, hey, I want to prepare and take the IGCSEs. And so they've asked me to help them to, to learn and master the IGCSE math. Um, and it's, it's funny because I, I which I've, I, I've done this, I've taught math among and other things though for, for over 20 years. And um, <clears throat> in the process of it, there's a bit of a conundrum because the math education feels um, really disconnected from our daily use. But, it, but if, on the other hand, you approach it because this is their choice, this is where they want to go, and they want to explore it. Um, and if you think about it as playing with concepts and ideas and then thinking about how it might be applied, uh, I, I, it's interesting because this is the first time I felt less bad about um, work walking them through that particular curriculum. But at, at the same time, we're in the process of trying to identify whether we want to access content online, what type of program we, we want to put together for these kids as they age. They are looking for some type of certification. We've looked at um, IB programs. And that seems very, very structured still. And um, uh, you know, the predominant alternative here that's, uh, that, that's very traditional and international are the British A-levels. And um, people are coming from both the progressive side and the traditional side saying, hey, these actually narrow our thinking. We don't want to go there. And because I'm in a very small sort of area and region, People have been coming to me saying, you know, please, we'd like to create something new and different. Can you help us to figure out what that is? So it's one of the reasons I'm here. And I'm sorry that I have to depart for now. Um, but well, I wanted to please share this me. Please contact me. I'd love to talk some more. Um, and actually, that's one of our goals is to help people do that. So not that you have to join us, but just we could be collaborating together. Uh, you could join us also. We could all join together and do this stuff online for pe with people, create, you know, find curriculums that are out there. I'm, I'm actually planning to work with a place called um, Global Village School, which is an online school. 
and they become more and more and more uh, guided by what the kids want to do and the families want to do. So they seem really great. Uh, and I'm planning to work with them because they want a weirdo like me to work with them right now <laughs> and help them to figure, figure out exactly what you're talking about is like, how do we, how do we support unschoolers or whatever and not make it too. And, and, but I think the point is think, not to oppress and force children. That's the thing or anybody and how they do their education. Right. So, yeah. I agree. And I, I appreciate your emails and I'm copying them down so that I can be in touch later. Um, sorry. I'm just in the middle of actually trying to do that. Come on. Um, it's moving all very slowly here. Okay. I think I've got them, but sorry, because I do have to depart. But um, no, I what I particularly appreciated was the notion that there is not one right way to do it because it's is very freeing, and it reminds me that what I will do, I believe, is uh, come up with some different models that we can present locally to see where the group tends to want to go. Um, but one of the things that's definitely still on the cards here that they're looking for is some sort of form of certification upon school leaving that creates some paths to possible university. And so the other option I was looking at was that making links to certain alternative universities that, you know, would recognize uh, a portfolio sort of summary of what was done and, and accept, create acceptances based on that. Um, and among them, some contacts at Schumacher in the UK. So um, Dan, I don't want to take more of your time. I want to let you guys go to breakout rooms. Great but question. I, I wish will... you have to leave. But yes, I understand you got to go and you and I can talk some more and I'll continue. I can respond a little bit right now to, to your question in case anybody else is interested in it. Um, but yeah, so um, it's a great question. Uh, of course, the goal is like with any, you know, within any kind of education. I mean, I don't think schools are saying we don't want kids to go to universities and we're not saying that either. Uh, you know, just just that go, you know, go and do the thing you want to do. And actually a lot of um, and not feel compelled that you have to go to university just because you have to go to university for whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, so but there are actually a lot. of. I was actually talking to Harvard <laughs> University about this. And uh, they said, actually, we like unschoolers uh, because they come, they come knowing what they want to do and they stay and they do so well and they make us look good. <laughs> so, you know, so that's, you know, that, there, there's, there's some insight right there. Uh, I'm not sure that all universities in the world are, are there yet, but there are a, a lot and we can definitely help guide people to to be like, okay, search for the university that's gonna be good for you and not worry about like, is this gonna be a university that automatically makes me a great doctor or automatically makes me a great whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, so but definitely, right, definitely I, not I, trying I, to tell I people do. don't go to school and don't take classes for sure. Yeah, just, you know. Yeah, I, I do have to go. So, but thank you so much and I'll be in touch, Daniel. So. Okay, thanks Wendy. And Sierra. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, break and then breakout rooms. Or do we have any anybody? If you have a question and don't want to talk to us <laughs> out loud, then you can just post it in the chat and then we can get that. So while everybody's taking a break, maybe Sierra and I, Sierra and I will make the breakout rooms. And when you come back, we'll be ready for you guys. So, so if you want to take a break right now, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, just like three minutes. So anybody else is here, you can listen, that's fine. So, oh, Sierra's gotta go too, okay. Maybe I'll just take a look. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Are you still there? Okay. Yeah. So we've got two questions, three, I mean, three with that one. They're kind of similar. It seems like people are mostly like worried about, not worried, but you know what I mean? Mostly like interested in uh, how do we do this, but at the same time, you know, allow for, you know, kids who want to do more structured stuff uh, or whenever that might be or however that might be. So, uh, you know, I'm as far as how many breakout rooms do you think we could have? There's 12 people. There's 12 of us, including you and me. Right. Or is that 12 not including you and me? Uh, that's including you and me. Including you and me. We could Perfect. we could just break out into two groups, potentially. Around Let's do three. Let's do three, three. Uh, with four people in each. What do you think? Okay. 
Okay. Sure. And then, so we could do, um, and is there a way to let We're back. Oh, we're back. Yeah, you yeah, I really got cut off half sentence. sentence. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just saying that still for me in, in the realm of self-directing learning, freedom is the key word because you could freely choose that what you need for this specific learning knowledge that I'm seeking right now, I need a structure and a very uh, high level of structure. If I'm trying to learn uh, how to calculate the weight that a, a wall in the house I'm building uh, uh, needs, probably a very structural mathematical way of reaching that value is the best way to approach that knowledge. If I want to like get to write a song, maybe there's not rigid structure that will help me to do a great song. No? Sorry. Totally. That's okay. Thanks, Yeo. So yeah, sorry if I broke you out of your rooms before you were ready, but um, thought we should. It happens. It happened. It happened. It happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> So um, was, yeah, so uh, Elif, I, you, I said there was a question that was in the chat. I, I messaged you so you could just send it to me if you can find it, because I couldn't find it, but if you could just copy it and message it to me, then we could address it. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it was Puya's question, but I don't have it. Oh, Puya, uh, oh, is a degree important? Okay, here I see it, I do see it, okay. There's actually, yeah, a lot of good questions. So, okay, so, but first let's see, like, uh, did you guys, I mean, I guess I could start and say in our group, we were talking mostly about what, what do you do when you don't agree with what the kids are doing when they're self-directed learning, you don't really agree with some of the details of what they're listening to or reading or whatever. So what do you do about that? And the feeling, the general feeling was like, just try to be there. Don't like deny it or, you know, block it or anything like that. Uh, I mean, unless it's super inappropriate, maybe. I mean, uh, there's always a question. There's always some questions of pornography and things like that. But we weren't talking about that. We were just talking about like, you know, music, right? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, typical pop music kind of thing, that kind of thing. Uh, so try not to block it, but just sort of be there for the conversation about it. If if you feel like it, there's some conversation needed around it for, you know, because it's a community, you're, we were talking, because the other set, part of it was that there's family and community around it, and there is culture, and everything around a person, and uh, learning what's, you know, learning what's, a, as much as you might live your own life, learning what's appropriate in a community or culture is not a bad thing to learn, you know, and so we talked, we were talking around that, so yeah. Anybody else want to share from their group? Yeah, that was something very interesting for me. Uh, to hear and what, what Victoria said before, uh, she said she was receiving um, questions like, why do you do this? Because it's going to make your life even more complicated. And, and I was wondering like, uh, what, what would we like to see from our communities? What kind of support, you know, concrete support we would like to see from our communities, specifically from, you know, aunt, grandparent, neighbor, I don't know. Obviously, all of them probably will have different roles, different contributions, but what, what, what we would like from them to, to give. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's why we're creating this platform to be able to have those kinds of discussions and conversations. So, yeah, I mean, I would, I would, uh, I would say Join us in our in our class or in our platform, or create your own like create your own community online with people of other people who are doing this kind of thing and have those kinds of conversations. It's not an easy question to answer in one sentence or right now in one minute or whatever kind of thing. It's going to be different for everybody everywhere, pretty much. Yeah, but it's a great I, I, question. It's, it's an important just, question to have to be thinking about for sure, for sure. I just want to jump in. Um, I'd love to connect with you, Elif, around that too, because I'm also not a parent, but I've I've like longed for 
you know, there's like parent support groups, but are there like anti support groups and like uncle support groups and like, you know, like I want to get together with other people who actively want to be a meaningful part of the lives of their young people in their lives, whether that's, you know, their students or nephews, nieces, whoever, or just like friends. Right. Um, and like, how do we, how do we be, how do we learn that role? Cause it's not like it's, we don't have that many great models. Um, and how can we learn together? So yeah, and she and but there are great models. Want to support that? So sorry, yo, yo, go ahead. There, there are, are great, great models. models. Like if uh, the same thing we were talking about, like these pockets of privilege for alternative education in, but that is the north of this world. There's so many awesome examples of community based in indigenous communities or in okay. rural communities all around the world that are doing this teaching themselves and learning what they need to survive in the context they want. Right. So for me, the key is recovering that, like, and it is, and this is connected to being with this activist uh, position, no? Like, if I could cho choose that in my realm, in my neighborhood, even in my street with the two houses at the side of mine, we all care about the children. And we, and then it's, and this is this phrase that people quote all the time, but not really go deep into what it means. It, there is a, it requires a village to raise a kid, you know? So if we take care of all the youth and, and the infancy in our own uh, community, short community, what we, the people we could have a relation with, then we're shifting that paradigm. And then you don't have to be the auntie. You, I take care of the kids because that's what we do here, right? And there's tons of examples of that. And I want to connect this with what uh, Brianna was saying in our uh, small group about the bin binaries, no? Like how, how do we are aware that we are not like anti-school? So then let's burn all the schools. Sierra touched about this too. Because sometimes my, we might be losing a lot of knowledge because maybe the elders in our community are used to share their knowledge in a very class or, or lecture way and they're not allowed questions or being interrupted and again it's like yeah but if that doesn't have to be the only model of learning and then what gives you the structure of learning is the context what is the best way that I could approach to this thing I want to learn but it is who is choosing what you need to learn and when and how. For me, the key, if we shift the pyramid of power and it's not the teacher or the authority in the school who tell you what and where and when to, to learn, but it's your interest and your curiosity to drive you to approach that knowledge, then we're already shifting the paradigm. We don't need to write seven theories for that. Just need to act on it and do it. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, uh, Puya, <clears throat> Puya had some questions that she wrote for our group, for a small group, but we didn't get to talk about that or you mentioned them. So I'm just going to read them out right now. She said, I also wonder, is a degree important? Why do we force kids to follow a fixed way of learning? And why do people think that homeschooling is only for dropouts? And I'm also bewildered by that last question. Uh, it used to be that way. Maybe it's just sort of like, uh, yeah, the old way of thinking or the old school way of thinking or whatever. But um, yeah, that's, it's too bad. I, hopefully that thinking is changing, but actually I was working in a sort of a distance learning or like a homeschooling center in a school district a few years ago, like three or four years ago. And a lot of the teachers involved in that were thinking, Oh, we're just here to get the kids to go back to school. <laughs> right. And I was like, no, they, they, they don't need to go necessarily back to school, but they would get upset at me for saying that. So anyway, so I don't get that either. Uh, why do we force kids to follow a fixed way of learning? Well, that's what we're here for, to change that. And is a degree important? I think that's the most, that's, the, that's maybe like, yeah, is it important? If it's important to the person, if it's important to the person and for their goal of what they want to do in their life, then sure. <laughs> but if they're only doing it because their parents think it's important or some adults or somebody around their community is pushing them or whatever, well, hopefully you can be, you know, they still have to decide for themselves. 
even you know my grand for example my mom started pushing my daughter to go she said oh you have to have a curriculum online and you do to do, do this thing and my daughter came to me and said i kind of agree with grandmother i'm going to try that and i was like i had to like bite my tongue and go okay you know and i'll support you in that because that's what she wanted to do and it didn't last very long <laughs> so you know uh because you know but she had to go through that. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's a def, it's a, a definitely a huge balance in there of like, uh, is a degree important? Sure, it can be in the world. Millions of people have demonstrated that it's not super important to do. You know, I know somebody who's a, a like a very wealthy chartered accountant, and they never went to university. <laughs> for example a lot of people say oh you want to be an accountant an engineer a doctor or whatever you have to go to university and, and so so you just got to look for examples out there of like how that's not true not necessarily true but at the same time we're not trying to keep kids from going to university to keep people from going to university if they want to go so for me that's my that's my answer anybody else want to respond to that Sorry, I talk too much, but I really need to share this story with you guys. Like, so Unitierra, Universidad de la Tierra, that is the learning center. I was part of the foundation process in 2000. In 25 years of, 23 years of existence, have only issued three diplomas. One was for, because the mother of a brilliant uh, guy that, now is con a consultant for agri organic agriculture here in Oaxaca. Um, he literally only have three years of school, or formal school when he came to learn this. Uh, the mother was like, I don't care that you're making money. I don't care that you're doing your life of that. I need a diploma to put in the in the living room. So because so when your aunt, auntie come, they, I could show them that. So we make the diploma for that. The the second diploma we printed was for bureaucracy matters, like a guy that was contacted by the government because he became an expert of uh, bicycle power machines. He developed, uh, he learned how to build some and then invent some others by himself, was, was hired by the government. And then when he was about to start working, they were like, we need your like university degree. He was like, well, I study here. They don't give degrees. They are anti-degree and they were, we don't care. We need you in this job. You're the only one that could take this position, but we cannot give you the position if you don't have a, 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 a university degree. So he came back, we printed the diploma. He took it, they put it in a folder and then in a drawer for the rest of the life. And then five years later, I, by curiosity, asked him like, what happened with your diploma? And he was like, well, I don't know, it's there. Like, it was for them. I don't need that, that paper. So, like, I never ask it back. I give them the original. So, like, I don't know what it is, no? So, it also depends on the context again, no? Why are, what is the, what life you want to live? If you want to live in a life that meritocracy is the only thing that would be a, a criteria to give you a job or not, then you need a paper. If it's you, if you want to live a life where you make your living by doing what you like and you're good off, and people recognize that, there's no paper that is needed for you. Yeah, absolutely. There's actually a story I have also of this uh, guy who is, uh, you know, uh, amazing, amazing expert on nature, just trees and plants and everything, and. He does have a PhD, actually, but he spent like the majority of his life out in nature in different countries, learning from First Nations people, from Native people uh, about all of that. And he has universities send him groups of PhD students to, yeah, like you, right? <laughs> but it's a different guy, but yeah, uh, send him. And then, and then they, they don't believe him. Like he's got all this real knowledge and they don't believe him. Like they'll go there and they'll say, you know, oh, what about this? And you'll explain it to them and they'll say, no, 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 the books don't say that. <laughs> you know, and so this is unfortunate that we have this, this whole, you know, thing going on in the world, but we got to change that. That's the whole point. It's like, we've got to, you know, just by being different in your own life, uh, that will change, you know, more and more people doing that. Yeah. 
So, yeah. So again, I don't know if we're answering anybody's questions here, but that's not the point of this. The point is to start the conversation and hopefully give you enough to keep the conversation going on after this. Uh, feel free to join us, contact me or Sierra if you would like to be part of that conversation with us or with the, what we're doing. Uh, if not, you know, even if it's just to say, how do we find a, something, even if it's not with us, because uh, your time zone might be different or whatever, uh, helping you to find something that you could do around you with people is also our desire. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, any I mean, we've, how much time do we have left before we have to go, Sierra? Uh, technically, we have another fifteen minutes. Okay, we can also wrap up. We don't have to go fifteen minutes, but I'm just going to give. I wanted to save some final words for a couple of minutes, but before that, if anybody has anything else that they want to say or add or ask or anything like that, I had a question. Where are you and Sierra based? I'm in Canada. Uh, I'm ever. I've lived. Okay, so I've lived in. <laughs> I've lived in Montreal and Vancouver in Canada. I've lived in Illinois and Seattle in the states. I've lived in Egypt and Iran. My mom is Iranian. My dad's Norwegian background, uh, American, but went, was born in Canada. And now I live in Costa Rica. So, and I've lived in Korea too because my wife is Korean. So yeah. So I'm, I have connections in all those kinds of places. But I guess right now I'm based in. Uh, Costa Rica. Um, I am also all over the place. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much pretty nomadic, um, but I have sort of like a home base in Northern Canada and the Yukon and also in Costa Rica. And I'm currently in Ecuador, uh, but just visiting for a month. How about you, Victoria? I'm in California. So. Nice. So you're in California, um, we, you're in France, Bertus. Elif, where are you? I'm in Istanbul now. Istanbul, nice. I was in Ankara when I was a kid for a while, so I've been in oh. Turkey, so yeah. <laughs> <About it. laughs> Puja's in India, Yaya's in, in Mexico. Puja or Puja? Puja. Puja, okay, sorry. Puja. Puja. And Devin, where are you? I'm in upstate New York in the U.S. Oh, nice. Okay. I've been there. <laughs> been, <laughs> been, there. <laughs> <laughs> been there a lot. I have my, my, uncle, my uncle actually lives in upstate New York, too. So, uh, so you don't have to convert to time. Sorry? Sorry, Yayo? It's, it's great. I mean, he's probably the only one that doesn't have to convert the time to figure out at what time you have to join. This <laughs> <laughs> and Yayo, where are you? In the south of Mexico, Oaxaca. Oaxaca, beautiful. I'd love to go there. I'm going to come visit you sometime, I hope. I've always wanted to go there. Ichuni, are you in Japan or where are you? I think Ichuni is also in Costa Rica. Oh, so oh that's right. Sense. She said she was in Costa Rica. That's right. And I sent her a message saying we have to meet uh, while we're here, if she's, if she's living here especially, but even if she's just visiting. And Nitia, is it Nitia or Nitia? Anyways, it's okay. So uh, yeah, I'm going to drop a link here um, to we just created like a, it was on the Mighty Networks platform. It's a kind of like a community forum space, but it's kind of a space that we have um, paid for and open to ongoing conversations and discussions and groups forming kind of autonomously after the conference, during and after. So if you want to check that out, uh, drop the link there. Um, I'll be on there too. So if you want to connect there or yeah, you'll have my email or WhatsApp or wherever, stay in touch. Join, join a crew in the Mighty Network or create one. Like you could call like this. I'm very interested in exploring this topic and it's like an open space and people will join you. It really, use it please because we insist too much in having this and we need it to be used. Yeah. So maybe Great Sierra, to meet you all. Maybe Sierra and I will join that. Okay, so I want to just, yeah, before we go, I just wanted to say, I think we said most of this already. Uh, you can contact me. I sent, I think Sierra, I'll put my email uh, in the chat. I think Sierra already did it, but I'll do it again so you can, in case you can see it. 
And uh, so that's my email. So if you want to contact me or Sierra, uh, or like Yeo said, maybe Sierra and I will just join in the conversations that are going on in the, what's it called again? I just joined it. Uh, the um, it's called the Reimagining Education. Mighty Networks. And it's uh -huh. on Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks, yeah. So join there or join us at what we're going to be doing if we have to do something that's different. Um, yeah, and then, uh, so yeah, there's a book that's coming out uh, that we're about around this conversation, the same kinds of questions and conversation that might give you some information that helps you to argue with people <laughs> about why you're doing this. Hopefully not argue, hopefully like bring them in, you know, bring them into the conversation and, you know, hopefully get them on your side or at least understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, and, um, and then also we're going to have that course and you, you know, you can send them to the course. Also, you can say, if you want to find out more, you can take this, this, you know, discuss, you know, have, get, join in this discussion with Sierra and Dan um, around the, around all these questions. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll put that information out there through Ecoversities uh, Alliance and, uh, and maybe have some conversation about it in the network as well. So. All right, so really, really loved this. This this is an awesome session. So much diversity of ideas and. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you all so much. Thank you.